Feel free to rage click away, but before you leave a comment disagreeing or just being angry, make sure to watch the whole video because a lot of people will leave comments and if they would have just watched the video, I would have totally answered what they're saying. So, I've come across knives with this mark right there, this little indentation. And then some knives of similar size without it. I'm like, okay, why is that there? What is the purpose? Regardless how you look at it, it would cost money to put this in there. So why are manufacturers going out of their way to put this indentation in there? Now, since I was a kid, I was told this is called a blood groove. And the argument totally made sense. Well, it made sense after the first time I talked a girlfriend coming up into my room and laying on my bed and I heard that. I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. It releases the vacuum. Helps you pull out the knife easier. Case closed. Nothing, nothing really to search about it. Well, then I made some knife videos and I called it a blood groove. And holy crap, a bunch of people freaked out in the comments. They're like, that's called a fuller. That has absolutely nothing to do with vacuum or removing your blade or anything like that. So I was like, oh. Well, I decided to go down the rabbit hole and I started researching it last night. If you were to jump on the internet right now and start researching this topic, you're going to find a couple of different things. One, if you call it a blood groove, there will be no less than 10 people that come and tell you how big of a mom is. Don't call it a blood groove on the internet. Number two. This running down the middle is called a fuller. It is not a blood groove. Okay, um, normally I would have thought, I don't need to say this, this is, you know, everyone who's watching this channel knows this kind of thing, um, you know, only a, only a kid or, or an idiot might call it a blood groove, but no, I heard a, uh, a sword maker on a, on a video, on YouTube in fact, refer to this groove as a blood groove. No one actually tests this. I mean, if they're going to argue till they're purple in the face about a point, you think they would just get some ballistic jelly, get two similar knives, Stab it into the ballistic jelly, put a scale on it, and see which one takes more force to remove. What they're telling me is this is called a fuller. This makes the blade stronger, just like how an I-beam works. So I'm like, all right, well, let's, let's dissect that point. What is an I-beam, how does it work, and why, does we, why do we use it? Say you add a solid block of metal. Now say you had an I-beam the exact same shape and size. If you were to push down on this and bring it to its breaking point, what will happen is you will get a stress, a stress, a stress, a stress, man, I can't talk, a stress fracture right here. And once you start ripping this, it's just a chain reaction through the whole I-beam. Kind of like the same reason I can rip a phone book in half. Yeah, I'm not He-Man or super strong, but once you get it started, it just falls apart. Now, an I-beam of this sh same shape will have similar strength. It will have less strength, but it will be similar. Because the only surfaces that matter is the top surface and the bottom surface. This will be compressed. This will be stretched. Once they start to break, it doesn't matter how thick of a piece of metal you got. The break continues all the way through it. Now, why that's important, say, for example, you're going to build a skyscraper. If you were to use solid pieces of metal... Compared to a similar sized I-beam, they're going to be heavier, harder to work with, and you're going to add a couple thousand hundred, a couple hundred tons to your overall design. So by making this an I-beam, you make it lighter and you make it cheaper. Now, if you were to hit a situation where a solid piece of metal would be stronger than the I-beam and the solid piece of metal would hold the load and the I-beam of a similar size would not, it would just be cheaper to use a bigger I-beam because of all that material you're saving. So, the fact that this makes the knife stronger is completely wrong. Now, it won't affect the strength enough to be significant on force going down or force going up. But now, say I were to go sideways with this, it's drastically weaker. Or say I were to twist with it, it's drastically weaker. I'm like, oh, that actually makes sense why there's not a blood groove on this bayonet. Because they're told to stab it in, twist, remove. So say you go through body armor or a whole bunch of clothes, you could twist this blade easier if it had a blood groove in it. Like, all right, I'm starting to 
kind of get into the picture here. I'm kind of starting to see what's going on. The next argument they say what this is for is weight reduction. You could have a sword of similar size and it's lighter. The reference they keep uh, the reference they keep using is I believe it's called a claymore. It was a big, long, heavy sword that we used to bust through body armor. Because that's when chainmail and plate armor started catching up with swords. And it's always been a race. Armor versus weapon. Well, playing field was about level, so we made these really big swords. We can stab through the chainmail or hit the armor hard enough. So even if we don't penetrate the armor, it still breaks their arm. Now that doesn't make sense at all. There would be absolutely no point to remove mass out of that sword. Because that's the whole point of that sword is to have mass so you can go through it. Like, for example, the Japanese, if they want something smaller and maneuverable, they have two different swords, so they pick the right weapon for the right situation. All right, so the mass thing doesn't make sense, not to mention there'd be a way easier way to reduce mass. You just use a smaller sword. If you want more maneuverability and more speed, use a smaller sword. That little bit, I mean, yeah, on a big, long sword, that makes a difference. That could be a couple of pounds. But on something like this knife, we're talking a couple of grams. That's not going to make much of a difference at all. And on a knife, it would be far easier to remove weight just by putting a saw back on it or using a smaller blade. Now, if you're trying to make like a super balanced knife, that makes sense because this is a very little bit, this is a very little weight reduction, so you can tune it in to get your perfect balance. All right, so what if those arguments are wrong? What if that is, in fact, to make it easier to retrieve your weapon? So then I started looking through history. And yes, on the Japanese swords, they do work. Now, it kind of don't make sense on this knife because if this was just for releasing vacuum, you would have to run the groove just like on the sword, all the way to the back. So even if it's buried completely in all the way up to the hilt, you're still able to let air in and then all the way to the front. This way it bleeds off. Well, this one don't go to the back or the front. So what's the deal? Obviously, it's not going to do a very good job at relieving vacuum. Well, this is a lot less surface area. No matter how you look at it, if this didn't have that mark and it was inside your body, there would be more blade pushing on skin for you to have to pull it out. This is that much less blade that you have to fight against. So that kind of makes sense. Now, what about the vacuum, you know, altogether? Well, if you go back to old combat swords and stuff like that, yeah, the groove goes all the way from the back, all the way to the front. So the vacuum kind of makes sense. As far as, like, letting the blood leak out, I don't really see that as realistic. I just don't see how that could possibly let blood leak out any faster. So then I started really searching for somebody to actually just stab it into something and test it. And what do you know? I found a video. I found like 10 videos saying that people are stupid for calling it a blood groove. That's not what it's for. Not a single one of them tested it. I did find one guy where he did test it. Okay, we'll push it all the way down to the bottom. Then we hook on this and we'll slowly start to pull up and see how much weight resistance we get. One ounce, two, three, four, Five, six. Now what you're seeing right seven, here is the material eight, nine, getting pulled up by vacuum. Eleven. Okay, so now we're gonna take the uh, the knife with the blood groove or the puller in it and see if it makes a difference in the ballistic gel. So we stick it in there. Okay, and now we'll pull it out. There we go. Okay, two ounces. Ounces, now, obviously four, on this one, it took a whole lot less force to pull it out. Ounces. Now, this is the only test video I can find. Maybe I'm searching wrong. And don't bother critiquing it. I'm just going to critique it for you. Number one, where did that other bowl of jelly go? Number two, why are you using the same bowl of jelly? Number three, your results are a little bit too good to be true. If it was like a third less force, that would make sense. Now, the reaction of the people kind of give it a, a legitimate feeling. Hmm. Huge difference. That one was 11. This one's 4. Let's stab it in there again. 
Told you it would be a lighter difference. Now, I went through this guy's channel just trying to get a feel for his personality to see if he would let his ego get in the way and fake a video just to prove a point. I mean, do we have to dress appropriately? Anybody can dress up like G.I. Joe. Does that give him credibility? Does it give me more credibility if I dress like this? Or this? Or this? To talk about guns? Jeez. Maybe I need to have lots of patches. Like patches, you know? All sorts of patches to show, not the UN patch, you know, to show that I'm, I'm somebody important and that I, that I can be taken serious, you know? Seriously? I'm not gonna say yes or no, but my spider sense was tingling. So let's sum it up. What is this for? What do we know? The main purpose of this and most knives is because it's aesthetically pleasing. It will help you sell the knife faster. More people are attracted to it because it looks cool. Will it or will it not help you remove the blade? The only person I found that tested it said yes. Is it a good idea for weight reduction? No. Will it help you? Will it? Would this work good for balancing a knife? Yes. Does it make it stronger? Absolutely not. You are definitely compromising the blade strength by having that in there. Not for going straight down. Eh, maybe for going in. I mean, that that's debatable. But for side? Oh, it makes it way weaker. Twisting makes it way weaker. Now, I did find a guy who's willing to take on the brunt of internet criticism and do some testing. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. You need to subscribe to his channel and start blowing his comments up that you want to see the test so he's motivated to perform this test because I myself want to see these tests. What he needs to test is one, does a blood groove make it easier to retrieve your knife? And if so, how much easier? On different circumstances, like just take a solid block of ballistic jelly, a solid block of meat, stab them in there, hook a scale to it and pull it out. If it does make a difference, what is the best blood groove design to get the most, the most uh, advantage when retrieving your knife? Two, how weak does it actually make your blade on side to side bending? But anyway, thanks for watching. Leave in the comments below what you think about all this, anything you've heard over the internet, anything you think I should know, and don't forget to subscribe.